and welcome to another interesting edition of your favorite law enforcement program, The Eagle, coming to you from the stables of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. My name is Aisha Gambari. Thank you for joining us on the program. On today's edition, we will bring you a report on the EFCC cadet training program as 331 detective assistant cadets trained at the Nigerian Air Force Ground Training School, Nigerian Air Force Base Kaduna, alongside 1,498 officers of the Nigerian Air Force who also graduated on the same day in a very colorful ceremony attended by dignitaries from all walks of life. Also on the program is an update from our court segment. Please stay tuned. The program continues right after this break. Don't go away. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation, and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Welcome back to the program. The cadet training program was born out of the need for the commission to train its own operatives. The training, which is an integral part of the commission's recruitment exercise, was developed to train the new intakes going by the vision and mission statement of the EFCC. Kamili Gebi in this report brings you highlights of events at the graduating ceremony of the newly recruited cadets. Over to you, Kamili. The Pioneer Training Program started in February 2005 with 117 officers of different cadres at the Police College in Kedja, Lagos, with the sole aim of bringing people who are hardcore EFCC operatives trained in the concept and ideas of the Commission. The program is a combination of rigorous law enforcement training involving classwork sessions, law, financial crimes studies, physical and mental exercises, investigations, integrity, resilience, discipline and training on personal conduct. The officers are also taken through self-defense classes to enable them confront any form of challenge in the course of discharging their duties. On January 13, 2017, 331 detective assistant cadets graduated from the Nigerian Air Force Training School, Nigerian Air Force Base, Kaduna. The new intakes were trained alongside 1,498 officers of the Air Force. This is coming at the heels of the acting chairman, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu's desire to increase the number of workforce in the commission in order to meet up with the many challenges of fighting economic and financial crimes in the country. The graduating cadets who were all selected based on merit and federal character in August 2016, were invited to the Nigerian Air Force Base, where they underwent rigorous medical and physical screening exercises in order to ensure their fitness for the all-demanding job. The colorful passing out parade climaxed six months of rigorous training to equip the officers in becoming anti-graft warriors instilled with discipline and integrity.
Also, the number 10 guards, which is the guard for the EFCC operative, is commanded by a female operative. The line of the entertainment is running. It also demonstrates the dynamism of Nigerian efforts as an organization as well as the fighting force. Champions Banner. Us as a senior of our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we give the banner to the parade ground is Flight Sergeant Mohammed, who is the Alpha Jet Squadron Senior Non Commissioned Officer. The banner is escorted by Recruit Polo A by the right and Recruit Alu M by the left, both from Alpha Jet Squadron. Speaking at the occasion, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, who doubles as the reviewing officer, congratulated the operatives of the EFCC for their gallantry and brilliance. Abubakar, while listing the qualities exhibited by the new operatives of the EFCC, said he has been briefed about their demonstration of commitment, hard work, and courage during training, attributes he added are essential in their career progression. He urged the cadets to be faithful and committed in the discharge of their duties as so many people will look up to them. It is through your commitment, self-discipline and determination that you have met the standard required and you should be proud of all that you have achieved. I therefore congratulate those of you that are passing out today. I'm sure you have imbibed the core values of the military profession which includes absolute loyalty, discipline, honesty, and courage, among others. He expressed delight over the collaboration among law enforcement agencies such as the EFCC, which made the Nigerian Air Force personnel to train EFCC operatives alongside NAF cadets, adding that the cooperation remains a practical step towards enhancing interagency partnership, which is necessary to effectively respond to national security imperatives. Abubakar admonished all the graduates to be loyal to the federal government by being patriotic, vigilant, and of good conduct. He also charged them to always remember that their duty is to protect all Nigerians, irrespective of their ethnic or religious inclinations. In his remark, the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, who was visibly excited, expressed his satisfaction with the training, hoping that the synergy between the two organizations will be sustained. The commandant of the Nigerian Air Force Training School, Air Commodore N.O. Oyibo, said it was a privilege for the NAF Training School to have trained the EFCC cadets, adding that the cardinal objectives of the training is to instill discipline in the cadets, which will form the basis of their conduct in the tasks ahead of them. Corozo is an act of indiscipline. It's an act of indiscipline. And one of the things we teach here, in this center here, which we emphasize rigidly, is discipline. So by so doing, by so doing, we ensure that the recruits are well disciplined, and we also teach them how to be civil in their conduct, so that they will handle all their cases in a very professional manner. And by so doing, they bring a lot of reputation to EFCC and to Nigerian Air Force for where they were trained. The newly graduated operatives, comprised of individuals who were picked from across the six geopolitical zones and states of the Federation, who had successfully passed through all the screening to become the lucky ones. Actually, it wasn't easy, but thank God I was able to, con con I was able to cope up everything because I could remember the first day I came over here because right from the first day you enter, you are going to start suffering. The suffering starts, so I was like, okay, I was going to go home. I wasn't going to continue again. But the college, they told me when you've entered, you can't go back again. So I have to endure. I came in, everything, it wasn't easy. We started during August, during rainy season. So they keep us under the rain, rain will beat us, everything in the night, put in. During the afternoon daytime, there is sun, they will keep us under the sun, cover up, we sit down, sun, everything. Everything at all, it wasn't easy at all. But thank God, with the help of God, prayers and my other classmates, at least we're able to pull through, we we'll console each other, don't be angry, please, and you know, maybe this one will say, ah, I'm going to run. Because many people dash, I remember the summer boys, that is the boys, we call them summer boys, and the girls, we call them summer queen. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call us, summer queen. <laughs> so the boys, 
they, a lot of them dashed actually. Only the girls that none had run away so far. All the girls are complete intact, but the boys they weren't able to endure all the stress, so they left. When I came down here, I was like, man, how will I be trained with the Air Force? So it's a hell. Okay. Passing through the train, I was complaining, uh uh, see, they're supposed to separate us since that we are not saving human lives, that we are only fighting corruption, that we should leave. I uh, separate the two, but after a while, corresponded. I had made friends. They were teaching me a lot. From there, a month, two months, to this thing. That was how everything went. The operatives include 51 females and 280 males. Three individuals, Mustafa Suleiman, Obuefi Wisdom, and Obaji Paul, were recognized for standing out exceptionally in all written examinations, practical tests high degree of discipline, physical fitness, and certain leadership traits. First in order of merit for the EFCC operatives. EFCC 16 oblique 044, recruit Suleiman M.I. As a demonstration of the bond between the EFCC and the Nigerian Air Force, the acronym of both organizations was displayed in a silent drill. Highlights of the event include the silent drill, quick march, and different military demonstrations. Thank you, Kamilu, for that report and a big congratulations to the new cadets. I wish them all a successful career with the EFCC. From that, we'll move to the court update segment as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, false witness attempts to distort facts in ongoing trial of former Chief of Defense Staff Alex S. Badi retired. Rola Keodof in July reports. The plot by a prosecution witness to distort facts in the ongoing trial of a former Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex S. Badi, was on January 10, 2017, exposed by counsel to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Rotimi Jacobs, SAM. Badi is being prosecuted by the EFCC before Justice Okon Abang of the Federal High Court in Mitama, Abuja. He is standing trial alongside a firm, Yalikam Nigeria Limited, on a 10-count charge bordering on money laundering, criminal breach of trust, and corruption to the tune of over 4 billion naira. He allegedly abused his office as CDS by using the dollar equivalent of the sum of 1.4 billion naira removed from the accounts of the Nigerian Air Force to purchase properties in choice areas of Abuja between January and December 2013. The offence contravenes Section 15, Subsection 2D of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011 as amended and punishable under Section 15, Subsection 3 of the same Act. The witness, Joseph Upitu, who testified as PW13 and was led in evidence by Jacobs, told the court that he received hundreds of millions of naira 
Brombadi for various construction projects. Okpetu, a builder and managing director of Habco Nigeria Limited, Kunichun Drilling Services, and Deal Plus Nigeria Limited, narrated how he was contracted to build a three bedroom duplex in Yola, valued at 150 million naira for Badi. Renovate Badi's country home at Mobi, Adamawa State, at the cost of 50 million naira. Paint one of Badi's homes in Zone B, Abuja, amongst other renovations, and purchase plants and equipment for a farm belonging to the former service chief. The drawing in respect of the Yola residential duplex was tendered and marked as Exhibit T88. Confusion, however, started when the witness began to contradict the statement he had earlier volunteered to the EFCC. Sensing a foul play, counsel to the EFCC, Rosemi Jacobs, SEN, swiftly drew Opetu's attention to the contradictions, asking the witness if he still stood by what he had said in his earlier statements. Upon further examination by Jacobs, Opetu admitted that the counsel to the second defendant, Iyalikam, Samuel Zibiri, SEN, who was holding brief for S.T. Ulugorisha, was in fact his close family friend. At this point, Justice Abang adjourned to Thursday, January 12, 2017, for continuation of trial. On the next adjourned date, the prosecution witness, Joseph Opetu, gave insight into how his company, Havku Nigeria Limited, was paid the sum of 100 million naira to build churches, a mosque, and a civic center in Badi's village in Adamawa State. According to him, between 5 million to 8 million naira was spent on the renovation of the church used for the Thanksgiving. Upetu further narrated how his firm received the sum of 14 million naira for building a house for the officer in charge of the Joint Armed Forces in Mubi, Adamawa State. He also told the court that he imported materials, plants, and equipment for Badi's Kantie farm in Nasarawa State. Answering questions on his connection to Badi's company, Yalikam Nigeria Limited, Opetu said he doesn't know the company, but he was paid the sum of 30 million naira by the company in 2015. When asked about the structure of his company, Dealplus Nigeria Limited, the witness responded that before 2015, the share structure of his company, Dealplus Nigeria Limited, was 4 million shares to him, 3 million shares to Alex Badi Jr., and 3 million shares to Kam Tufa Badi. Kam Tufa, who according to Opetu is Badi's son, contributed a house given to him by his father to Dilplast. However, in a dramatic twist of events under cross-examination, and given the witness's previous performance in the stand on the last adjourned date, Opetu's testimony took yet another direction. Responding to questions from Akinolujimi, SEN, the witness said that he was not stable psychologically when he statement at the EFCC, a response which made Jacobs jump to his feet to draw the court's attention to a suspected move to distort facts. At this point, the matter was adjourned to January 25th and 26, 2017, for continuation of trial. Bada is being prosecuted by the EFCC before Justice Okun Abank of the Federal High Court in Imitsama, Abuja. He is standing trial alongside a firm, Yalikam Nigeria Limited, on a 10-count charge bordering on money laundering, criminal breach of trust, and corruption to the tune of about 4 billion naira. Rolake Odofin Cholaimi, reporting for The Eagle. Glad to have you join us again. You're still watching the program, The Eagle, coming to you from the stables of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Still on cut updates, justice was on January 13, 2007, served as a legal state high court sitting in Ikeja, convicted Walter Wagbasoma, Adaura Ugo Ungadi, chairman and managing director, respectively, of Ontario Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited, along their company in a 1.9 billion Naira oil subsidy fraud, preferred against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Golden Agu has the details. It was a dramatic climax to a trial that actually began on August 1, 2012, when they were first arraigned before Justice Habib Akiru of the Lagos State High Court, Ikeja, for the fraud. Justice Latifa Okunu, who took over the case on February 26, 2013, when the accused persons were rearranged along with Fakwade Ebenezer, an employee of the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, on an amended eight-count charge bordering on conspiracy, obtaining property by false pretense, forgery and altering of documents, convicted them of all the charges. In a test ruling, 
Justice Okunu found Ugongadi and Wabasuma, the billionaire oil magnate who was absent in court, guilty while acquitting Ebenezer, the third defendant. The trial judge held, and I quote, The defendants defrauded the federal government of 340 million naira in the third quarter of 2010 and 440 million naira in the fourth quarter of 2010. End of quote. The judge further noted that according to audit reports by Akintola Williams Deloy, they did not remit an excess of 754 million naira to the government. Wawasuma, according to Justice Okunu, knowingly received the sum in excess of what Ontario Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited was entitled to, and the court's opinion contributed to the false pretense. She further noted that Ugongadi, being the alter ego of Ontario Oil and Gas Nigeria Limited, was aware of the shady deals and so was complicit in the company's illegal acceptance of 942 billion naira as subsidy payment instead of 602 million naira. Justice Okunu further noted that the prosecution led by Rotimi Jacobs SAN provided incontrovertible evidence detailing how the convicts discharged much lesser quantity of petrol and presented a short tank certificate that was forged. While recalling that in the course of trial, a prosecution witness gave evidence as to how Ontario Oil and Gas paid 37 million naira for 12 million litres of fuel in a throughput agreement with Integrated Oil and Gas, but later collected subsidy for 19 million litres. The trial judge noted that in another transaction, the company collected subsidy for 19 million litres, yet it paid a throughput agreement with Obat Oil worth 28 million naira for 10 million litres of fuel. The judge held, and I quote, Another prosecution witness, Obinna Okono, a store officer at Integrated Oil and Gas, gave evidence that Ontario brought in 12 million litres of fuel via a mother vessel, MT Pacific, and then a daughter vessel, MT Union Brave. The same quantity was trucked out by the company. Evidence by the prosecution is that the product was discharged into one tank which cannot contain more than 16.5 million litres because of an inbuilt floating roof that takes about 2 million litres. And so, I find that there is credible concrete evidence that the quantity of petrol discharged was 12 million litres. End of quote. A calibrated report marked as Exhibit D1, which showed that the tank in question cannot contain more than 18 million litres of fuel, was described as very damaging and helped make the trial judge come to the conclusion that the convicts conspired to defraud the federal government. After giving insight into a trial which spanned almost four years, Justice Okunu pronounced Wabasoma, Ugongadi and their company guilty. This prompted Defense Counsel E.D. Onyeke to urge the courts to temper justice with mercy, asking that a custodial sentence starting from the day she was arraigned be granted on the basis that his client has health challenges and she's an employer of labor whose workers depend on her managerial abilities. Jacobs, however, argued that a custodial sentence will be sending a wrong signal to the public that the rich cannot go to prison and will be a hindrance to the country's fight against corruption, adding that there is no medical report before the court regarding the alleged ill health of the defendant and that the prison has medical facilities. He therefore urged the court to discountenance the argument of the defense, reminding the court that the minimum sentence of the offenses for which the convicts have been convicted is seven years. However, the court could not announce the sentence to be meted out to the convicts as Ugo Ngadi slumped in the dock, thus stalling the day's proceedings. Justice Okunu thereafter adjourned the matter for sentencing to allow Ugongadi get proper medical attention and appear before the court. I am Golden Ago, reporting for the Ego. Next on the program is our viewer comment segment. You too can be part of that segment by joining us on our social media portals at Official EFCC across all the social media networks. Let us take a look at some of the comments via our handles. Music 
One Ibrahim, a biomilitif, wrote, Congratulations to the newly graduated operatives in the commission. I hope you will all seize the opportunity given to you to be of great service to the nation and make your own contributions in actualizing the mandate of the highly reputable agency, ESCC. I wish you all success in the course of your official duties and obligations to the nation. Always thrive for excellence at all times. God bless you all. God bless the Commission and God bless Nigeria. End of quote. And with that segment, we wrap it up on today's edition of the program. Please don't forget to like our page on Facebook.com forward slash official EFCC. You can also drop your comments via the eagle at EFCCNigeria.org or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. And to watch our videos, just click youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Gambari. Until we come your way again next week, God bless Nigeria. Bye-bye.